Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. On Salvage Hunters, <laughs> Drew haggles with a head teacher. Can I say 200? You could say 200, I'm not going to give you 200. <laughs> Does business with a dealer in Blackburn. I want it. I tell you what, I do like that. Squeezes into a hoarder's shed. It'll Thank be a you. bit tight in places. I'm a bit tight as well yeah. in places. And tours a grand country house. It's like gothic, crossed with Arabic sort of looking. Look at that. That. Where'd you get this from? Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Oh, it gets even better. Wow, nice original frame, no rot. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. Boom! <laughs> Now, that I would like to buy. He'll even venture abroad into uncharted territory. Skull. My family started this farm 1,200 years ago. 1,200 years ago? Yeah. There's nothing he won't buy. <sighs> They're in great shape, aren't they? With help from his wife, Rebecca, and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. Drew Pritchard's antique showroom in North Wales, and it's all go. As it's the school holidays, he's teaching daughter Grace the ropes. So there you go, your first listing online ever. I feel like I should take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca gets a call from a country house, which has recently been renovated. So with the prospect of leftover original items, Drew has to drop everything and make this trip a priority. Sidekick T is going with him. It's an easy journey, only 125 miles east to just outside the market town of Rugeley, near Litchfield in Staffordshire. We're in the Midlands. Uh, we're off to see... Uh... The wizard? <laughs> no. We're off to see a chap called Nigel. Hello, I'm Nigel Wharton, and we're here at Hawkshard Estate. Drew, I think he would be interested in some old furniture. We've got some old chairs which came out of the building, and I believe he likes window frames. Nestling in over 200 acres of Staffordshire countryside, Hawksyard Hall is a fine example of a Georgian Grade II listed house. The estate's history can be traced back to 1270, when local gentry used the land for hunting. It is a building that was partially built by the Spode family. Oh, right. Heard of Spode pottery. So is, is it quite fragile? Is it made of porcelain? No, it's not. <laughs> no? no, it wasn't built from... Sp it was built from the money they made uh, from right, making not things. Out of no. It's not in the style of... No. Uh, okay. No. Always a wealth of architectural detail in these places. They have a lot of it lying around. Blimey. Well, this is the place. Look, it's immaculate, isn't it? Is it? He's been doing some renovation work and says he might have the odd piece for us. Oh, interesting house. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel. Good morning. Drew. Nice to meet you. I'm Nigel. Hi, Nigel. I'm T. Thank you. How are you doing? Welcome to Orchard. No, thank you. Thank you. It's spectacular buildings. Amazing looking. It's like Gothic crossed with Arabic sort of looking buildings. Yeah, no, it's very unusual. Yeah, you certainly can't ignore it, can you? No, no, no. <laughs> it's unusual to come across houses of this style, uh, but not around the Birmingham area. There's a lot of them because there was a huge amount of craftsmen here. They called Birmingham the workshop of the world, and it was because the best stuff, brasswork, stained glass, stonework, ironwork was done here. All right to have a quick look around the front of the house? Yes, by all right. I'd love to, personally. Okay. <laughs> no, That's really good. I wasn't expecting that when we come through. Yeah. Oh, look at this ceiling. Look at that. This is licensed for civil ceremonies. This is oh, it's a spectacular place to get married, isn't it? It's lovely. Do you have uncivil ceremonies here? Isn't yes, it? yes. <laughs> <laughs> we do, do you, lots of things. Do you, do you take this from? No, never. <laughs> Anything that requires a room. <laughs> and a nice view. It's it wonderful. is. It's, it's stunning. Uh, I love all this stuff. You know, you have to, you have to, to really, be to be in our job. You have to be passionate about it. Tour over and time to get down to business. The outhouse is full of discarded items from the estate. 
Drew hopes there will be rich pickings. Ah, OK. Here we go. Oh, this looks like my sort of place. Unkempt. Uncapped is what I like. I like uncapped. Ah, now, that. Where'd you get this from? Has this come out of the building? Um, yes, it, it was... Uh, well, obviously, it's come off the site somewhere. It's a lead winder, isn't it? It's not lead, it's copper. Really beautifully made, actually, that. Picture a store. Still really nice. Great feature window. Taken from the estate, this window frame is made of copper, which is light and durable. Originally, it would have been able to swivel. Restored, frames like this can go for around £250. Well, that's of interest. That's of interest. Um, is this something that's for sale? Yes. What, what would you want for it? I've no idea. Uh... It's, a, it's a difficult one because the amount of restoration work it's going to take to put it right is huge. I should imagine it's in here because it was so expensive to restore. I can fix this, but it's a big job, to be honest, to put this right again. And I think it would... Uh... It would command some decent money once done, but it, this is, a, this is a, a real big job because of the, the manufacturing method of it, where it's being made. But I think, looking at it, I would say, in perfect condition, it'd probably be a couple of hundred pounds. In this state, I think it's a sort of 50 pound job, to be honest with you. I don't see it as much more than that, um, purely because of the amount of work it's going to take to put it right. Yes. Yeah, just you know what I'm saying. Yes, like I can appreciate it's the just work the, in it. It's just the amount of work, really, because yeah. I can't really sell it as it is. I could maybe knock the glass out and then tack these back up again. But and as sell my it like father that. would say, if you had to make one, it's hell of a start. <laughs> I'll have, can I have that? <laughs> I'll have that, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, that means, so by that means you want some more money for well, it. Well, if we could, a little bit stronger. A little bit stronger. Um, I think I'd go to. If we went to sort of £75 on that, I'll take a chance on it. Because I've got a feel it's going to be something that's going to hang around. I can't sell it straight away. I'm always after things I can move on immediately. And with that, I can't. And I've got a lot of projects. It's laying here for 10 or 13 years, as I know, so yeah. we don't know where it comes from. So, no, I'd be happy with that. Great. Deal. Thank you very Thank much. You. We'll, uh, that'll go to a good home eventually. Yeah, no. It'll go to somebody who needs it eventually, but it's just it's finding that person. It'll go to a bad home first with him. <laughs> and then, a good and then he'll find a good home. <laughs> These things here as well. These are interesting. These are um, gas fired rats, aren't they? Yes. Um... Sometimes people call them steam rats. I always try and avoid radiators for the obvious reason that they're really big and heavy, and there's loads of lads mm. who have just specialised in them and do super jobs on them. Old radiators like these are highly desirable. Unrestored, they're worth around £80. But restored and in working order, they could fetch around £300 each. I can sell these to a mate of mine who, who specialises in radiators, but I know they're harder to convert than normal radiators. I've had to convert one once, and it was a bit of a pig. Um, what would you want for those? No idea. I think we'd be taking a bit of a chance on these, because they have been outside and they clearly need a lot of work. I don't know. Um, what am I going to get from... I'm thinking sort of 40 quid each, to be honest oh, with you. I've got 50 in mind. But... Had you? Oh, I've got 35. <laughs> yeah. I went up to 40 out of the goodness of my heart. No, the... I think 40 would be fine. I think that's about... Yeah. Then I can I can sort of make a quid by just turning them over. <laughs> 80 quid. We'll have them. Thank you very much. Marvellous. I can't pay any more for them. He's happy to get that. He's never going to use them again. So £80 for a pair of those, and we will just trade them straight out. As they are, they're going to be sold. When we came in, I did spot something else just in the entrance right here that I like the look of as well. This old desk chair. I quite like that. It's got a good look about it. I like these, this back panel particularly. It's needs a little bit of a tender loving care, a little bit of restoration. It needs tightening up, but it's all there. Yes. You know, it's still, it's, 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 it's really nicely made, actually. Probably How old would that be? About 1920, this one. But no, look at the work underneath it, you see. It's oak. It's really honest. You know? Yeah, no, it's... These uh... are nice. Yeah, aren't they? They make it. Mm -hmm. I think without those, it would look a little plain, but it's unusual to have that very, very high back. Really big, wide seat, nice arm. The modern desk chair dates back to the Victorian era, when employers began to improve working conditions in offices. This swivel chair could fetch up to £400. So, would you let that go? Yes. Well, 
Yeah, you know, trying to send them. <laughs> I well, did sit in it earlier, and I was well, quite attached to it. Actually, it's quite comfortable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is this is this is yeah. Nigel trying to make it worth more money. <laughs> yeah. I, I really like yeah. it. I don't really want to sell it. Already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I really like it. That's why I've left it in the shed for the last yeah. ten yeah. years. Yeah. Um, it needs a lot, as you can see. Right. Uh, it's an easy one for me to price this. This is a fifty quid chair tops. That's it. Uh, I wouldn't pay any more for it in this condition. If it was in really good condition, we'd probably pay about 120, 140. But I'm going to have to spend the difference that of what I've offered you to what it would be worth fixing it. So uh, that's what it needs. Great looking chair, but it needs a bit doing. I just feel I might want to go out and buy one <laughs> after I let it go. That's uh, that's what I'm thinking. Uh... We could buy a nice modern one for 65 quid. So if I gave you 65 quid, I'll get this old one and get it restored and you can have a nice new one. How's that? Done. Lovely. Cool. So yeah, happy with that. Let's um right, let's go and get the van, and get loads of it. What happens a lot when we pull something out and show any interest in it, the person who owns it goes, well actually I really like it. And that does happen and it's difficult. But I was determined to buy the chair. No, Nigel, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for letting us on the estate. Much appreciated. Thank you, Nigel. Lovely to meet you. And I might pop and see you. And I'll pop on your website. I've certainly. got some nice things for you. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank Cheers you. Again. Bye bye. bye. Yeah. Finding that oak chair, to be honest with you, was a bit of a bonus. I liked your sales pitch. Every now and again, you've got to, <laughs> you've got to turn <laughs> it on. If I give you £65, you can go and buy a brand new one. Yeah. But he actually wanted that one. I know, but I want that one more, and we've got the capability to put it right, you see. We're going to be able to restore that. He might want to be first dibs on that. It's fine, I'll happily sell it back to him, a little <laughs> bit of profit once it's done. Happy. After a successful trip, Drew and T arrive back in North Wales to show their treasures to the team. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. How'd it go? Good. Got some good stuff. Uh, it was, what did I pay for him? 65 quid. Yeah. I, I went to buy it and then all of a sudden he, he fell back in love with it. Great price. Great price. Look at it when it's done. I know. like this. Yeah, that's, that's what, ma really that's what unusual, makes it. That's really unusual, isn't it? Yeah, it almost looks American to me. What do you think of these? Gas-powered radiators. Very nice. Right. Yeah, they? they're right. We Very might be able nice. to double our money on them. So, we'll sell them as they are. Beautiful. It's lovely, isn't it? Needs loads of work. No. Loads <laughs> of work. Don't lie. A couple of cracks. That's the only pain, that bit missing. Well, there's um, no pains at all. <laughs> <laughs> so plenty of work to keep Restorer Gavin busy. Today, Drew's taking up another offer he needs to respond to quickly. This time from an antiques dealer who says he has some things that Drew might like. He needs to clear his stock quickly, so Drew has to act fast. He and T drive just over 100 miles northeast to Blackburn in Lancashire. We've come to see a guy called Stephen, who runs uh, Oaks and Son Antique Furniture. Well, I do know that Drew likes the weird and the wacky, really, so I've got a little bit of stuff I think he'll like. Uh, always worth a call, though, because he's constantly got stuff coming through the door. So we could be on for anything today, then? Today is one of those days, anything, because as we're arriving, he's going to be buying stuff. He'll have bought stuff this morning, he'll have bought stuff last night. And also, did you notice the number of the road we came in? No. The A666. The Devil's Highway. Yeah, and you know what 25.8 is, don't you? No. It's the square root of all evil. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, roughly, the square root of all evil. Are you having a breakdown? Yes. Which makes a change from the van having a <laughs> breakdown, doesn't it? <laughs> well, here we are. Here we go. Great, cracking little warehouse. Oh, yeah, looks really good. Oh, hi, Ruth. Stephen, hi. Nice to How see you. How are you doing? Yeah, hi, Stephen. Hi. Nice How to see you. How are you doing? Yeah. Um, we're in the area, thought we'd call in. You've always got stuff coming through. Yeah. So I wonder if you had anything new in today or recently that might be me. There's quite a lot of uh, interesting stuff in, yeah. Do you, what do you want, do you want me to show you? Or do you want yeah, to a... just show yeah. us through the warehouse, if Come you could, please. <laughs> Rather you than me. There's not room for both of us. You have a, <laughs> have a look round. If I just see anything, I'll shout yeah. out and... Um... 
With barely a foot in the door, something immediately catches Drew's eagle eye. Old notice boards. One's not got a glass in, but that's the one at the back. Yeah. Not sure about these. I think they're nearly there. These display cabinets were used as notice boards outside churches, town halls and schools. They would have featured local announcements or timetables. They could sell for around £50 each. I do the four for 100. And 25 quid each. 25. I don't know. They've got something about them, haven't they? I wouldn't know what you do with them, to be honest with you, in your house. Put things in. <laughs> Hang them on the wall. You've got a fridge for that. <laughs> you put stuff on use them as, like, photographs. Got your family uh, photographs. Yeah, yeah, you can do all sorts with them, but there's also a school of thought now that people are liking to buy them with all this stuff in as well. Oh, uh, right. So, that, like, little snapshots of history as well, you see. Particularly that one there. I think, I think I'd go for them if they were 20 quid each. I think I'd probably go for them. I'll take the four. Even That's including the, the one without the glass? Even without yeah. the glass. Okay, deal. deal. Thank you. Yeah, I'll have those. They're funky, aren't they? See it? See the old glass? has a bit of movement in it. With a clean-up, we're definitely going to be able to double our money, if not a little bit more for them, because they're just... they've just got a good feeling. That's all. That's it. And sometimes that's enough to make me buy something. So far, so good. Now up another floor, and, true to form, Drew hones in on something he likes. Just like me. It's not got any age to it, has, hasn't it? Yes, what is it, 50s, 60s? Yeah. Industrial retro. Yeah, it's a really basic one, isn't it? Yeah. Like the work lights, I've never seen one so basic. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like me this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's really basic, but maybe yeah. that's... Maybe that's... Maybe that's all right. Given the size of the high-powered light bulb, this lamp was probably from a photographer's studio. Restored to working order, it could sell for around £90. How much is that? 25. 25 quid. OK. All rubber, smash proof. <laughs> I like that. Anyway, yeah, we'll have it. Thank okay, you. OK, cheers. Thanks. Lovely. After years and years of doing this, you're able to walk into yards and be thousands of things, and you're able to quickly see what you want. Chapel chairs. Always buy for yourself a few of those. What's that lamp there? Yeah, no boys. That's quite different again, isn't it? Ollie has a problem restoring some of these sometimes, but that one might be all right. They'd come off lathes, some of them. Yeah. So they were, you know, they'd be positioned over a lathe when they were working, but it's quite a decent shape, I think. A machinist lamp like this would have been fitted to every lathe in a factory. The multiple joints and robust design allowed the worker to adjust it easily wearing gloves. In working order, it could sell for around £150. That was how much is that? 35. 35 quid. Could I, knock, could I try and knock a bit off? Could I do 25? Or is that too much off it? I'm just trying to... I'll do 30. I think I give 25 for Did it, you? to be honest, yeah. OK, fine, don't worry. 30. Cheers. It. Thank you. Great. hope you're remembering all this. I am. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> <laughs> you paid 20p for the thing downstairs. <laughs> That's the that right. it. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does that sound right to you, David? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> cool. All right. Yeah, no, we'll have that tea. Great. There you go, Lovely. on the pile. In the pile. Which we're developing. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll leave it here and I'll come back and get it when I get the other one. Yes. At least you've not bought anything heavy yet. No, not yet. <laughs> we <Normally>. will. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> We've got a tail lift on the van. Yeah. We're fine. We can buy all sorts. And then he complains about how I've got to carry it for him. Yeah. Well, I've always got... I've got a bad back, so I'm always... Is that Have you got a bad back? Well, it comes with the job, there I think, doesn't it? There you go. It just, it, it's... Especially when you get over 40. <laughs> well, ex I think mine came kicked in 40. <laughs> Click, that was it. I tell you what, I do like that. I like the sign. It's a bit rotten, but it's yeah. still... It's uh, Horwich Industrial was... They made a lot of railway engines and carriages. Yeah. It's the word industrial, actually, that I like. It's all right, actually, the conditions... You could trim it and reframe rough. it. Yeah, you'd have, to, you'd have to get all that... What's the remainder of that frame that's on it off? Horwich, near Bolton, is famous for building steam trains. This sign would have been placed over the entrance to the factory site and, restored, could sell for £600. How much is it, anyway? Quite like that. I'd take 200 for it. Ooh. It's carved. Oh, true. I know it's carved and gilded. And then yeah. what would have been over the top of that, you see, is a piece of glass. Have you had it a long time? Yeah, I've not wanted to sell it really, so. Really? 
200 quid. Kind of a cheeky and that's offer you 180. Yeah, go on. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> We're on a roll. Right, run up there and get that down now. Well, no, that was... <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you sell ladders? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the piece I'm looking for. It's got, you know, that mix of heavy industry and the beauty of the things that were made in the Victorian era all mixed up in one sign. A very, very good item. Interesting shape, Drew. Yeah, sort of British Art Deco cloud type shape there. Sunburst door. People painting them and doing yeah. doing stuff like that. This I mean, it's not dear. It's like hundred this, quid. That's. Yeah. Well, there you go. See, it's not a lot of no, money. No, it's not full. But this is really in. There's a lot of like seventeen to twenty-five year olds buying this sort of yeah, stuff. Right. This sort of real retro stuff. They are mm -hmm. buying this as well. Because <laughs> that is a fifties one rather than a thirties yeah. one. Yeah. So yeah. Proper retro, really. Right. Cool. Though. Nothing it else in here. Nice what shot. else have we got? Some we got some. Well, we've got the aware. containers and a couple of little rooms outside. Let's go and have a look at those. Yeah, please. This is that's the cell door. Yeah. It's off an old Victorian police house. They're at. That's not too bad. I had one. It's got steel on the front there. I had one of these. I had a few of them actually. This one's better than the ones I've had. Much earlier. You've got all the bits for it as well. Yeah, I've got the that's where the food used to go in. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. From there, yeah. So that's the in, this is the in, is this the inside? No, it's the outside. Though. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a bit so of a clue. Lock yourself in. <laughs> uh, they're really trusting yeah. in the Victorian yeah. era, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Just lock well, yourself in there, yeah. obviously. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Don't run away. <laughs> Good thing, though. interesting. It is. Somebody can think of a use for it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. How much are they? I'd what, sell what? that for. It's sell it. Hey! hey. Sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Here are we. <laughs> 150. 150. See, that's not bad, is it? It's a lot of at door. all. It's a lot of door for your money. <laughs> we go, can we go somewhere else? <laughs> There's nothing Drew loves more than going to where the public aren't allowed. So Stephen takes them to his private storage containers, where he's put some more items he thinks are right up Drew's street. That's that's my sort of thing. Very much so. Is this for sale? Yep. T.H. Tong, the bakery fitter, Pendleton, Manchester. So it's, it's a shame good. somebody stripped it badly. Mm. It's quite good looking, though, isn't it, really? Mm. Nice Victorian one, isn't it? Yeah. Baker's cabinets usually have racks to allow the air to circulate and cool the cakes and confectionery. This one is rare, as it has drawers. After significant restoration, it could command around £1,800. Go on, then, hit us with a price for that. 800. Ooh, really? Yeah. Oh, my word. 16 drawers. 16 it's only 50, 50 quid a drawer. drawer. Eight. Oh, I've seen you pull that one as well. <laughs> <That's>, I'd <laughs> have thought that would be worth well over a grand with a bit of work on that. I don't Th that's, what's, that's what's knocking it for me is the work, is it needs so much work to make that right. It's all, I mean, the drawers are all good. Mm. I think it's a £1,500 piece done. Right. But I think I'm going to have to spend 400 quid on it to get it right, because I can't do the work. I'm going to have to give it to somebody to do the work. So I'm going to be £1,200 to it and to try and make three before tax. It's not worth it. So what would you want to give for it? Half that. Oh, I can't do that. I can't pay 800 I want to buy it. I know. It's very much my sort of thing, but I cannot pay £800 for it. 700 but I'm, I'm, I can't do it any less. 700 and I'm not making a lot at all. You'll be making more than I will. And I put it in here because I thought you'd like the piece when it came. Quite so it's, you're the first to see it. I want it. But I, I want you to have it. I, I can't <laughs> pay that for it. So I immediately thought, I always, you know when you, you look at something and you go, the price is there in your yeah. head straight away. Yeah. And I just looked at it and went, oh, 400 quid, 450 quid, max. No. Nope. All right. Damn Sorry. it. No, no, no. I hate it. I hate it when I have to walk away from something so good. Nothing to see here. Six. 
six, because I, I genuinely think I'll get 1,200 quid for it. Done. Because so, so, uh, 600 six, quid, it's not six, uh, I'm making 50 quid. <laughs> 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 that doesn't seem right somehow, does it? But I'm, I'm going to spend know. at least four. Yeah. He's got to put yeah, it on no, the van. No, no, He's no. got to put it on the van. Hmm? That's harsh. That is harsh. It's I, know. I, know. I know it's harsh. We'll do 625. Go on. Such a lot Sporting profit. Such a That's lot of money I'm only, for it. I'm only making wages on it, really. I had to go pick it up and van two men and... I love it, but do I love it that much? Yeah. Go on. <laughs> Cheers, you're a good man. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Right, we'll have a cup of tea. Can you get that on the van? <laughs> <laughs> See you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I could glove that. Just dump it all for now and then. There you go. That Watch gold the leaf there. OK, just these chaps now. They're very illuminating. Shed light on the situation. Let's try and keep everyone in the dark, is it? Yeah. I think that's us done. That's great. Smashing. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Well pleased with that um, cake shelf. Cake shelf. You've got a cake shelf, I've got a cake shelf, we've got a cake shelf in the back of the van. After a fruitful trip, Drew and T arrive back at base where the team, including daughter Grace, are waiting to see their wares. There you go, so what do you think of this? That's fab. It's great, isn't it? The colour's amazing. That's absolutely spot on. It's great, isn't it? Bakery rack. It smells of cake it smells as well. Does it Just smell of cake? cake? It really <laughs> does. It's great. What do you think of these, Spec? Yes, it's somebody's mementos, though. It's a bit sad, really. No. Isn't it? Is it a printer's example thing? Oh, is it? It's just, just display cases, but I just oh. thought they were lovely. That one's quite cool. That one's really basic. Yeah. Like, really, really, really basic. 25 quid. Yeah. I thought, well, you know, but it can be a cheap way into somebody having a, one there, of those yeah. lamps. Yep. But that one there. I should imagine it's going to be a look at all these caps and everything. Yeah. Might be a bit of a pain for you to do that one. Oh, well. We'll, we'll see, see how we go. Like we... Ollie gets straight to work on the lamps, but the baker's cabinet has to go off site to Alex the French polisher's workshop. Paint stripper is one of the tools of his trade. If I paint this on, it will um, take a couple of minutes to really dissolve it. But then when I scrub it, if you give it a second, it will all come straight off. Then we'll just give it a nice simple wax just to put a bit of a sheen on. Anywhere where we've had to sort of really strip it, where it's gone a little bit too far, we can age up again, just to give it that original, authentic look, really. Another day and another job Drew has to pick up immediately. He's heard that a junk shop owner is retiring and having a closing down sale, so he needs to get in first. They're making the four and a half hour journey 200 miles east to Spalding in Lincolnshire. We've been uh, given a heads up on a guy called Brian Payne who owns and runs a place called Brian's Trading Post. Now it's house clearance stuff. Right. Okay. Problem is with places like this, they're picked over daily. We're going to semi retire up into Scotland where I'm going to open a military museum, a gift shop, and tea room. I cannot see anything that isn't flat, as far as the eye can see. N name one truly great mountaineer from Lincolnshire. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, give us a minute. <laughs> uh, uh, no. 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 Brian's trading post. There we are. Get in here, off the road. And retirement sale. There you go. Right. Hello there. Drew. Hi, Drew. Nice to Pleased meet you. Pleased to meet you. Right, Pleased to meet you. You're a psychic. You I, I am, it. yes. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Somebody has to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With so much to look through, Drew wastes no time and heads for the sheds. Well, I'll leave you to look round there on your own. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Brian's done what I like, which he leaves us alone. I don't like to go to yards and have people sort of following us around and dealers following us around. It's great. He's gone, off you go, lads, have a look. Keep going. If you're struggling to find stock in this, then I've, I've got no chance, really, have I? No, you can do. You know what yeah. sort of thing I'm looking for? It might just be something really obvious that I'm not looking at. 
not my bag whatsoever. Yeah. Although if you've got mugs like that small for the lads, they'd have shorter tea breaks then. Too many tea breaks. <laughs> not enough, they'd say. <laughs> Souvenir of Wales. Nice. Made in England. It's a laptop for you, Adrian. Early Learning Centre. Yeah, it might be a bit more difficult for you to use, though. Small laptops, child even laptops are old-fashioned now. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, Brian. Well, we've, well, we've been round some of it. There's still... Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot more. There's yeah. a lot to yeah. see. There's a lot to yeah. see. A lot to see. Um, where next? We go through here? Through here. Yeah. Well, this is another building. Um, not as big as the others. OK. It's full of cr um, full of rubbish. Um, <laughs> trade, <laughs> trade in stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. trade yeah. in stock. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, but I haven't, I haven't got the other drawer for it. What is it? It's just a banker. Shall I get this out of the way? What's your fault? Yeah. Uh, what I like about it is I just like the, I just like the drawers actually. These drawers were used to file index cards in a Victorian office. Sold individually, they could be worth around £20 each. So, um, well, how much is it, then? I'm looking for about 40, 40 quid for it. Yeah. I think I might just for the drawers, maybe. Do something else with the drawers. I don't know, I just think they... They're in the right. kitchen, full of... Uh... So, you see the whole thing in the kitchen. It's in bad nick. One, two, three... Four that have got all the things on them. Rest, I'd say. How about 30 quid? Yeah, go on. You got a deal. Lovely. Cheers. Yep, we'll have that. We'll just buy them for he these. Can, he can carry it out, though. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> have you spoken to him before <laughs> we came in here? <laughs> so, a little cheap buy, but again, it's something we can have in the shop that isn't a lot of money and somebody can walk out with it, put it in the car. And that's always a good thing to have. Keeps people coming back. It's just that thing of trying to find. A needle in a haystack, which is what this is. God, like mixtapes. <laughs> Radio comedy sitcoms, 1987. Remember doing mixtapes? <laughs> Remember a long time ago. Sitting next to the uh, next to Radio One um, when they were doing the the Top 40 with the two buttons. No, I don't think you ever did that because that would have it been was illegal. Co copyright infringement. Yes, we weren't allowed to do yeah, that. Yeah. So we never actually did that. No. Trying to get in here. Where yeah. So what's the best thing you ever found when you were doing a clearance? Actually, it was the um, first World War gas mask. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. It's very unusual, cos they're made of cloth uh, with two glass eyes and a rubber for breathing. I've seen one. They're quite, um, sort of ghoulish, aren't they? Oh, they're very oh, sinister yeah. looking. Very awesome to, yeah. Anything First World War is becoming very collectible. Now. It is, yeah. Hugely. Yeah. Hugely. Um, <coughs> I don't think there's anything in here for us, to be honest. No, that's no, no problem. No, I just... There's, there's probably something, but I can't yeah. see it right no, there's, now. No, there's no problem. OK, so okay. I think we've seen everywhere, have we? I think so. You've been round in a circle twice, so... I, <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I only, can't tell. Only yeah. twice? Oh, this twice, normally works, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, no, basically, that's, that's about it. That's yeah. all. OK. Yeah. Well, we're going to get loaded up. We're going to get this thing out now, and then we'll yep. pack it up and sort some money out with you. Yep, OK, all no right, problem. Oh, taking some weight there. Is it? it must be the cabinet. Yeah, shove it in the corner, T. Yeah. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for letting right. us in. Hope to see you again. Yeah. Who well, knows? Thank you very much. Another British junk shop gone. Yep. We're going to end up with more landfill because there's not blokes like that around. And it just the whole thing really, really gets my goat, to be honest. It's a form of recycling as well, really. It's the oldest and best form of recycling. Antiques are green. It is green to go out and buy antiques. So, yeah, a cry and shame when you see the end of another junk shop. The lads press on from Spalding, a further 100 miles south to Watford in Hertfordshire. Drew's heard that a school in a country house has an overspill of original furniture. We've come to see a lady called Sheila O'Neill. She runs a Montessori school called High Elms, right. and she's American. She's the headmistress? I think so, yeah. Is she going to shout at you a lot, like you were shouted at in it school? Is, it is strange. I tried to get out of school, and now I spend a lot of my time trying to get back into them to buy things. 
I suggest that he looks in some of the sheds outside. We've got things stored there. And uh, we've got a full cellar of items that we're not using. The manor was built in 1812 and is a Grade II listed Georgian house. Sheila bought the property in 1997 and turned it into a private prep school. There you go, High Elms Manor. Perfect, look at that beautiful old building. Drew loves salvaging at schools and country houses, so has high hopes for this visit. Hello, Sheila. Oh, yes, how do Hi, you do? I'm Drew, nice to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you too. Hi, I'm T. How are you doing? What a wonderful building. It's beautiful. It's my favourite period of building this. There's the proportions of the buildings and the rooms and everything. This looks wonderful, this room. What's this? What's this? The ceremony room. OK. I don't know. Yes, that's a Persian, the Prince of Persia's shield, apparently. It's a wonderful door. So I think it was Lady Bourne who lived here in the early 20s who put that in. She was very exotic. She had peacocks out in the lawn. And she wore snakes around her, a snake around her neck when she had dinner parties, a live snake. Yeah. <laughs> Very... Uh, did cool. the snake get to eat at dinner as well? <laughs> <laughs> sure, it did. <laughs> no, it's wonderful, wonderful. And uh, the uh, fireplace over here... And, uh, Unusual tiles. Yes, they're handmade Persian tiles. <laughs> and yeah, you can see the there's, <laughs> there's remnants of old Carrara marble slips behind here. As usual, I'm enjoying looking around the old building. It's what I love, but I have to go and look for things to buy. Time to get salvaging. First, Sheila takes Drew and T into her private art studio. There might be some things in here. Oh, what a lovely room. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, you've got... This thing you're stood in front of. Yes, that's an old... Artist draft. easel. Yeah, it moves up and down. Do you still use this? No, not really. Yeah. I think that is Swiss on the back. Yeah. yeah, you can just see it here. So, yeah, J Rapper, Geneva. Super quality, condition's not great. But all the bits are there, which is the important bit, all these little parts. Vic adds to it, what they call it? Um... Patina? Yes. It's <laughs> patina. It's got patina. It's certainly got that. There you go, so that locks. Just no, everything, all you... the fittings are just Gosh, super. I'm just right hopefully now. There you go. <laughs> Our job's done here, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you the bill for the restoration. <laughs> yeah. OK, would, would you be interested in selling it? Well, you made it so attractive. <laughs> <laughs> we do that. That's unfortunate. It's part yeah. of the job. This walnut drawing table is designed to be fully adjustable and collapsible, so it can be stored in small spaces. Restored, it could sell for around £900. I think we're looking at about £150 in this condition. Yeah, uh, what would think... it be worth um, if it was all done up? Well, I think it needs to have about £400 spent on it. Really? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Can you just send it? Hmm. No, it's not quite as easy as that. <laughs> see the joints are all coming apart on the ends here? See how it doesn't work? It's, it's got some damage done. down here. This has to be mint condition. Well, I think, um, can I say 200 yeah. Could say 200, I'm not going to give you 200. <laughs> uh, 175. 175. I'd say if we went 165, I'm happy. All right. Is that okay? Yeah. That's maybe mean. 170. 170. Five. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's money to be made on this. I've got to spend a bit, but it will look remarkable restored. But then it's going to be a tricky one to sell. The quality should out. You should always buy the best you can. And that is a pretty good example of the type. That's but, fine. See if it can interest you in anything else now. Yeah, for sure. Happy with that. <laughs> Next up to the outbuilding, which houses furniture overspill from the school. There you go, see, look, you can hardly see the building. <laughs> well hidden. Old tables. So it looks a bit new for you. No, it's okay. This stuff, yeah. yeah, this bentwood furniture is all right. It's okay if it's sort of well designed. That is well designed, but it's all the wrong size. See how low it is? Yeah. It's no good. It's on the wrong height. Oh god, there's nothing here. Yeah. It's a shame. Nothing. Was this an old bomb shelter? Or something? Looks like an air, air raid shelter, shelter or something like that. No, it wouldn't be air raid shelter with windows, would it? 
don't know no. that's true, actually. Yeah. Well, here you go. Oh, Loads right. of chairs. Fingers crossed. Oh, they're all looking a bit little again. Oh, these are medium size. Again, needs to have a taller seat than that. It needs to be about 17 and a half, 18 inches. A bit too little again. That is not. They're all that size as well, by the looks of it. Mm, might be the odd one at the back, actually. Got to try and get through here. You all right there? Yeah, yeah. Just thinking that one at the back, it looks slightly bigger. I'll pass that out to you and just compare it to that other one. I can't really tell. They all look, I think they're up. That's can't about tell the scale same again. Oh, no, it's wrong again. It's the same height. Try it next to the other one, T. Is it the same? Yeah. Slightly. It's the same. Yeah. Uh, 200 chairs, and none Please. of them any good. Let's go and see if there's anything else in the house. None of it's quite right. Difficult. Difficult. It's part of the job. It's the way it goes. I have to go and see if there's anything in the house because we're finding nothing here. Back in the main house, and there's one last place to rummage around. Sheila lets the salvagers loose in the cellars. Loads. Pick mm. a room. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> lots and lots and lots. The one we're in to start off with. Lots and lots and lots. Stuff that looks really, really old school. School. Right. Old hey. school school is what we're after, OK? Old school school. There you go. Oh, there you go, like that. Pull that out. Stool. Yes, please. That's cool. It's got something. Oh, it's got a footrest on it as well. Industrial. I like the wooden seat and the footrest. Yeah, it's cool. Yep. That's great. OK, we want that. So I'll put that at the bottom of the stairs. What we want to know is, is there any, is there more? any more? It's a school, so there might be more. Unlikely just be one. There's not any more in this room. I'm kidding. It would oh, appear. Just, a, just one more would be good. You oh, you find another one? Uh, no, just I'm looking in this corner. I can't see anything. This old leather case is quite cool, too. I think the conditions against it again, though. OK, really? That stinks. Good old case, though. Is that what he's bothering with? No. Just got another mouthful of... It's just a, a decent big leather case, but it's... Uh, it's beaten to hell and it's missing. It's it's handles there, and yeah. straps and things like that. <laughs> so you want... With any luggage, you're always yeah. looking for the real quality. Right. And it's worth a lot of money when you find good stuff. That's, ne that's nearly there. So it's nearly there, but it's also pretty badly damaged. Right. So, so not, no, not leave quite it. there. No. Too much work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's buying um, something that needs work and is not going to be the best ever. I know about yeah. too much work. I think you've, you've probably seen too much work. <laughs> I've witnessed a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. No, nothing. No. Nout. With no more bounty to be found, the boys head upstairs to report back to Sheila. Hello. Hi. Uh, we didn't find a lot. Oh. So, yeah, all we found was this one um, little industrial stool. Would, could I buy this one? Yeah, of course. Stools like this would have been used by a designer working at a drafting table. Perfect for contemporary kitchens, it could sell for up to £150. I think in £25. Fine. That's about fair. Yeah. Isn't it? Deal? Yeah, yeah deal. Happy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Right, we'll take that. Well, no, T will take that. Yeah. There you go. At <laughs> £25, she's happy with that. It's probably a lot more than she'd expect to get for something like that. But any tall stools like that I can get, particularly if I've got sets of them, uh, sell really well. One is one, that's OK. Sets are better, but one, I'll take one. I think that's us done. Yes. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Nice meeting Thank you. Thank you. Strange collection of stuff we bought today, but still, the house, beautiful. Yeah, amazing. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank okay, you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye. throw this at the top.
perfect. I love the stool. Uh, I absolutely love the stool. Such a basic, basic, basic piece, cheap piece of furniture. Yeah. Just great looking, though, isn't it? Just yeah, it does look really nice. Yeah. So another road trip has paid off, and it's back to Wales to share their gems with the team. Only one. These two came from oh, High Elms Manor. Manor in Watford. That's Why right, it? isn't it? Great. 175 pound. Fine. For that, 25 quid. I actually. I rather like this. I prefer that to that. Yeah. Right. It looks like rubbish. Yep. Feels like rubbish. Yep. <laughs> Is a bit rubbish. He took a punt on it. It I... was 30 quid, right? But what I thought was, forget that, these, polish them all up. Singly. Singly, sell them in the shop, 25 quid each. Yeah. Yeah? To move new stock as quickly as possible, handyman John gets started straight away on the drawers from Brian's trading post. I'm just applying some uh, antique pain uh, wax, then I'm going to uh, polish it up after that. See, it'll give it a nice, nice finish. Now they're ready for the showroom. Restorer Gavin gets to work on the stool. Once again, paint stripper works magic. As you can see, it's been a few colours over the years. It's been red, it's been green, it's been white. It'll be nice when it's finished. You always leave the odd little bit just to, you don't want it looking too new. Two doesn't like it like that, so. Three hours later, and it's ready to go up on the website. Bit different. Wow, well done. Really That's great. fantastic, actually. Drew was quite taken with this chair. The wood against the really burnished steel, quite masculine, his cup of tea, I think we might be trying it out at home until it, um, until it sells. And Alex, the French polisher, brings back the restored baker's cabinet from Oaks Antiques for Drew's inspection. This is actually my particular favourite antique in the shop at the moment. Really? Yeah. It's an antique that smells of cake. <laughs> <laughs> cake antique. It's a cake antique. You should double your money on that easy, isn't it? It's got to be worth 1,800 quid, yeah. somebody, in that state. It looks like it's been used for years, and it looks like it hasn't been restored, which is exactly what we wanted. So perfect, very, very pleased with that job, beautiful. Uh, I've met some new contacts, I've bought some wonderful things. As ever in this business, it can be a bit hit or miss. This week has turned out really well. <laughs> 